Hey everybody, this week on Provost Park Pass, we're going to be talking about the secrets and history of Disney California Adventure. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, okay. Right when you first walk into Disney California Adventure, you need to see this. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. This is my wife's very favorite character, and it was one of Walt's very first creations. He worked for Universal Studios when he created it, so they claimed the rights to it. So he created a new one, Mickey Mouse. And he just retained the rights to Oswald a few years ago, so he's been brought back in the family, and we're embracing him with open arms. Uh, Oswald. There are seven lands at Disney California Adventure. One of Vista Street, Hollywood Land, Grizzly Peak, a Bugs Land, but not for long. Cars Land, Pixar Wharf. <laughs> no, wait, that's Pacific Wharf. Pixar Pier opening June 23rd. Tomator! Tomator. So for Pixar Fest, I'm about to order color changing noodles. Woo! them change colors. I don't really know how to do it. I think you pour this sauce. Did that not really work? Try the lime. <laughs> oh, they are changing. See? They're getting lighter. It's really good. Oh, I like that. Do you want to say something, camera? Wait, wait. So you look filmed yet. Okay, Provost Park Pass. Okay, film some. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Provost Park Pass. Provost Park Pass. <laughs> 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 My favorite Pixar character. Ooh, ooh, I like Jesse. What is your favorite Pixar character? Oh, that's very difficult to decide, but I would have to say Mr. Incredible. I have to get a wide lens whenever oh, I Oh, seriously. I know. How does she yodel, yodel it? How does she yodel? Craig, you gotta move over. There's a trolley coming through. Oh, 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 oh Scatter! Scatter! This park has a lot of history. A lot of good history and also some bad history. So Disney California Adventure was announced in 1991. It was announced as Westcott. It's supposed to be a West Coast Epcot Center. <laughs> the Imagineers figured they couldn't pull off that feat so they canceled the idea. Disney executives sat down and in 1995 came up with the idea to do Disney California Adventure. Then they broke ground on it in 1998 and completed it in 2001. So hype! was incredibly high for the opening day of February 8, 2001. Expectations were off the chart. There was only one little teeny tiny problem though, the annual passport holders. Disney allowed a soft opening in January to the annual passport holders to come have a sneak preview of the land. And they came, and they didn't like it. And word of mouth spread so fast that it was such a disappointment that the turnout on opening day was dismal. There was a lot of criticisms about Disney California Adventure. The lack of theming, the lack of rides and attractions. A lot of people considered the theming to be redundant. You were in California, yet you were going to a land about California. One of the biggest complaints was about something that you don't ever really think of at Disneyland, and that's the berm. The berm. It's not like Disney California Adventure could just go into a hair salon and ask for a berm, please. First of all, how would you even fit Disney California Adventure salon? I don't even know. People were complaining about the lack of berm. One of the other really big criticisms that Disney California Adventure had was the lack of children's attractions. There really wasn't any children's attractions. The land was designed originally with the adults in mind. A lot of the complaints that Disney California got was that all the attractions it had were very generic attractions, just like off-the-shelf attractions that you see at any particular boardwalk, pier, or amusement park was not very Disney-esque. Another thing that people noticed about Disney California Adventure that they didn't like, there was a disproportionately high number of restaurants and shops compared to rides and attractions. People felt, hey, I'm paying money to come to Disney California Adventure just to shop. Too many restaurants, too many shopping, not enough attractions. So the park capacity at that time was estimated to hold between 33 and 35,000 people. On a weekday, Disney California Adventure was averaging about 5,000 people. 5,000 people. Disney knew it had a problem and they had to remedy it really quick. So they did. So the first thing that Disney did to try to get more people to come to Disney California Adventure was 
slash prices, lower the prices, hoping more people would come. That didn't work. People didn't want to come and spend their money to a park that had no attractions. They'd rather go to Disneyland. One of the other criticisms Disney California Adventure got was that there's no nighttime entertainment, no parades, no fireworks, no shows to keep people in here in the evening. So, in July 2nd, 2001, Disney unmothballed and brought out of retirement the Electric Light Parade, thinking that would attract new people to come to Disney California Adventure. And it worked for a little bit. The problem was it didn't really remedy the problem of not having any attractions. People didn't want to come to Disney California Adventure, see a parade, and then just go on a bread tour. They wanted attractions. The first major change they did was in 2002, they opened up It's a Bugs Land. This land was the very, very first themed land by a movie done in a Disney park. It was huge and it was a big success. And we're grateful for Bugs Land because then it paved ways like Cars Land, uh, Pixar Pier, all the other major things that are happening within the park. Bugs Land! Woo! Best is toughest! Bugs Land was a big success at Disney California Adventure. The problem was it pandered and only catered to the very, very little wee, wee bugs. So people were still upset, like, oh, there's nothing else going on. So Disney decided we need to up our game, and they did. <laughs> Disney knew they really needed a huge attraction, what they call an e-ticket attraction to attract the large crowds. Now, for some of my younger viewers, you're probably like, why do they call it an e-ticket? Well, in the olden days, we used to go to Disneyland, you'd buy tickets, A, B, C, D, and E, and the e-ticket rides were the best rides. They opened up their first e-ticket ride, the Tower of Terror. Whoa! <laughs> Just recently, they renamed, they rebranded the Tower of Terror as the Guardians Galaxy Mission Breakout. The Tower of Terror was a huge, huge success for Disney California Adventure, and a lot of people did start coming in the park to ride this brand new attraction. Disney wasn't done yet. Disney was trying to make sure that Disney California was going to be successful. They originally even thought about combining the parks into one giant park, but the cost was way too prohibitive. So, from 2007 to 2012, they did a massive, massive overhaul and restructuring of Disney California Adventure. So, Disney was all in on improving Disney California Adventure. From 2007 to 2012, they did a massive overhaul of Disney California Adventure at a tune of $1.1 billion. It's been really well received since then. People like this park now. It's the 11th largest amusement park in the entire world. Still not quite as big as this big brother Disneyland across the street but it's still very popular. There are seven lands and 32 attractions in Disney California Adventure, and I'm gonna be going over each one of those lands, telling you trivia about each one of those lands coming up in the next couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for your support, I appreciate it, and I think you guys are awesome, I really do, and I love all the little comments you put down there. If you have a, an idea that you want me to put down or vlog about, please put it down in the comments down below and I'll try to get to it. Thank you once again. Click this little button here if you haven't already subscribed. Subscribe right here and follow these other videos right here. Thanks guys, have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later.